Good evening, Philippines. Good morning. Good afternoon, world. Welcome to another interesting episode here at the English Blog. I'm Adrian from Makati City, Philippines. I'm Christine from Daytona Beach, Florida. And I'm Sarah, an American living here in Northern Italy. We have Jackie Everson from the beautiful Alberta, Canada. She ran some fun couples communication workshops based in Alberta, Canada. And Adrian and I, who are dating, attended her workshop series and had a wonderful time. And we're going to learn a lot about Jackie and her work. That is right. Morning, and, and to formally introduce Jackie, uh, she uh, identifies herself as she, her, and hers, affectionately known as Jack. Jackie lives, works, and plays in Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. Her full-time gig is with the incredible team at the Canadian Mental Health Association, where she creates and delivers mental health and addiction programs for the community. Recently, Jackie and her partner, Kelly, developed a new mental health program, Movement for Mental Health, which they are beyond jazzed to be offering in their community. Jackie's number one passion is connection, match that with her lived experience, and she is the person you want on your healing journey with you. Jack firmly believes we all deserve to be seen and heard, and she strives to live a judgment-free life and believes in equal opportunity for all. Safe spaces are her jam, and supporting people is her why. Welcome once again, Jackie. We are just so delighted that you're part of this uh, episode. I'm sure that our guys here in the Philippines, in Canada, and all over the world, those who are watching will surely learn a lot from you. At the English blog, we provide customized lesson plan making services, life and career coaching sessions, weekly vlog and blog content related to ESL education. If you have any questions about our services, message us at www.theenglishblog.com or at any of these social media handles. Besides our main website, you can find us all across social media. We premiere our vlogs on Facebook at the English Blog for Teachers, and then later they go up on YouTube. So you can watch our videos there. We're also on Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and Instagram. And you can listen to us on the radio in Mindanao, the Philippines at 90.5 Good Vibes FM. And you can also listen online. They have specific instructions about how to do that on their Facebook page. So check it out um, and let us know what you think. If you have any questions, um, if you have uh, any questions for Jack or any ideas for future topics, please reach out across any social media platform. We'd love to hear from you. And here's our first question. What course did you finish in college? And what made you decide to focus on your current field? Uh, great question. And, and actually, it was funny when I first read this question, I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> because my, my field of study does not match up with my current field of employment at all. But it's an interesting story, right? We all go on these different journeys. So um, I did study criminology and law when I was in university. And I, I always knew that I wanted to go into um, a helping profession or a helping field. And of course, I always have believed and I still believe in justice and equality. So those kind of values that I have really led me into that direction of law and criminology. Um, however, early into my, my studies in university and, and even earlier in my life, but it really started to, to show up in my early studies at university, um, I found myself struggling significantly with mental health uh, challenges which of course led me uh, into my, my addictions career um, and quickly you know, started to watch my path and my destination uh, very quickly narrow on me. Um, so at that point, kind of my dreams, my aspirations, all of that really did fall away from me. Um, I had no idea what I was gonna do. I, I, I moved into more of a survival mode uh, than a thriving mode. So, that went on for a good 10 years of my life, my career in, in that, uh, uh, I call it my addictions career. It, it, it was my longest career that I've had thus far, um, but I did find myself in, in, a, in a place where I had to make a choice. It was, 
it came down to life or death at that point. And um, so I chose life and I got myself into treatment. And when I was there, I, I did realize that there was a lot of us struggling uh, with mental health and addictions. And I, I did not want people to feel the way I felt, feeling so alone and, and, and struggling. So I knew that people deserved to be loved, to be seen, all of that. So that's kind of where my mind went on my healing journey was how do I now use my story and my experiences to support others on their journey. Um, so fast forward, you know, a few years and, and have, uh, you know, got myself managed and under control. And, and I find myself here in, in Alberta, Canada, working for a Canadian Mental Health Association, where I was able to start up uh, our recovery college, which is part of the, the work that I do with the couples communication workshops, um, where, of course, I now design and deliver mental health courses and addiction courses here in my community. So I'm able to kind of to give back in my experiences and share that with folks. So along the way, you know, of course, taking educational uh, programs and trainings along the way to educate myself uh, more on mental health and addiction so I can help people along their journey. So that's, that's how I got here. <laughs> wow, Jackie, I never would have known that your course was a little bit uh, far from what you're doing right now, but sure. your story is just both interesting and inspiring thank you so much for sharing your story with us thank no you. wonder she's so passionate about what she does she has the right. story and the experience behind it all and that is incredible yeah. and very very thank touching you. indeed yeah her her struggles turn to become her strengths and she's sharing that with the people around her right now Yes, you, there's 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 a, a time in your life when you can find that your your trauma can be extremely transformative, and and when you when you reach that that level of awakening in your own journey, um, you kind of don't really have a choice but to to give that gift back to other people. It it kind of it just grows in you, and you like it, you just feel compelled to help, and and that's where that's where it led me. And and it, I do live a life now knowing my why and my purpose, and it's very humbling. So I, I'm, I'm fortunate for my experiences. I really am. Uh, Jackie, you run all sorts of these couples workshops. What kinds of tips do you have for viewers to help maintain healthy relationships when in lockdown? Yeah, this is, this is a great question. And I, 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 I love the questions that you, you all presented to me um, around this kind of area of relationships in lockdown. But I think when it comes to, to our relationships in lockdown, and, and certainly what I've seen in my experiences here with folks that I'm working with is first thing that breaks down is our, our is communication, right? When we, when we're not communicating with each other, uh, things start to break down and they break down very quickly. Uh, so one of the ways that I like to kind of suggest that folks look at their relationships is not so much how you maintain it, but are you actually living in a healthy relationship currently? And many times we don't necessarily know what a healthy relationship looks like. So we want to start digging into a little bit of that and understanding, is our relationship healthy to begin with? How are we treating each other? So there's kind of a series of of different kind of questions you can ask each other and and really be reflective in your own your own practice right is the relationship moving at a comfortable pace for both of you really important to understand those pieces is there trust right are you open and honest in your in your communication um ensuring that there's still independence within your relationship is very very important respecting each other obviously um is there equality within your relationship? That's another big thing, right? Is how much of the relationship are each of you uh, putting into? How much effort are we putting into there? So is there equality in your relationship? Is there kindness, right? What kind of language are we using with each other? You know, Christine and Adrian, you know, I talk about language so much in our workshops and how we actually uh, speak with each other um, is hugely important. And another area that's uh, really great to kind of challenge or question within your relationships is are you still are you able to take responsibility for your portion of the relationship right is there still kind of if if you're not jiving well with your partner are you able to recognize that some of this is my responsibility and not put all of that on the other person to fix us right because we know in our in our intimate relationships 
our partners are not meant to fix us, right? That's not why we entered into these relationships. So we want to challenge or certainly question kind of those elements of, are we actually living a healthy relationship? So then we can start maintaining those areas. And if we find gaps that it's, you know what, we're not being so kind to each other right now. That's, that's the gap we want to start to fill. That's the area that then we can start to spend some, some of our energy and time on, on repairing those areas in our relationship. So those are kind of some tips that you can, you can take with you. So we, it's a lot of kind of introspective looking, right? What am I doing in this relationship and finding time to actually have those conversations with your partner? Are we living a healthy relationship right now? Thank you so much. It's incredibly helpful. And I want to, I want to try it now a year into pandemic with my, (laughs) with my fiance. Well, thank you for talking about couples who are living together in lockdown, but not all couples are currently living together. There are also LDR couples such as Adrian and I, we are currently long distance. We met in the Philippines back when I was living and working there, and I plan to come back in the very near future, but right now we are maintaining a long distance relationship. And we are also a couple who are separated by distance due to travel restrictions, because there are restrictions on entry to the Philippines at the moment. And we want to know what tips do you have for LDR couples and couples who are separated by distance due to these travel restrictions? Yeah, great question. Uh, Restrictions or distance or however you want to call it. uh, There's definitely things that we can do. And and I was I was thinking that Adrian and and Christine, you should have been answering this with your your experiences. How how are you maintaining this? Right. How are how are you doing this? Because I don't think anybody sets out believing that this is going to be easy. Right. With our long distance relationships and not being able to to get to each other, um, which, which puts a lot of pressure and, and, you know, that on our relationships, it becomes very challenging for us. So there are a few things that we can do um, to kind of maintain these healthy relationships or, you know, um, that when we, when we're not able to connect with each other and it's, it's, first of all, what we have to do. And again, I always go back to self, right? What are we doing as individuals? And sometimes it's all about changing our perspective and our outlook on long distance relationships, right? We don't necessarily have to see long distance as this really, really hard thing. We can look at it and find a great amount of joy in this where we can actually go back to some of the simpler things in our relationships, getting a handwritten letter in the mail, right? Different things like this that we, we forget that it can go a long way for us. So number one thing when it comes to long distance is let's get out of our heads around how daunting and how challenging this is going to be and change our perspective and our outlook right away that we can make this fun. We can do, we can go back to basics around our relationship and, and actually make this fun and not so daunting for us. So perspective and outlook, number one, always go into self. What can you do, right? Number one thing. The other thing that we can do, and this one does sound challenging or can sound challenging. And uh, especially early on, I think when you're starting your long distance relationship, but we want to try to not, or we want to avoid excessive communication. And this is going to sound maybe a little bit weird, but bear with me here. We don't necessarily want to be on the phone communicating 12, 16 hours of the day, right? We want to save some room for for some intimacy in our our conversation. So sometimes we try to compensate for the distance by, again, over-communicating, kind of being in each other's faces this way. But the, the key here is really we want to, you know, less can be more in our long distance relationships. It's key to find the right time and those right moments for proper connection, right? So I know a lot of us kind of talk and sending just TikToks to each other or memes to each other, right? Great for our friendships, but when it comes to our intimate relationships, we want to find those really true um, quality moments where we're actually connecting. So kind of avoiding that excessive communication Nobody wants to be looking at their phone, see their partner's name come up and go, oh, another one, right? We don't want to get into that pattern. So avoid excessive communication. The other thing that we can do is set some ground rules, 
right? What are our expectations within this long distance relationship? And this is really important, right? We want to be clear of what we expect from each other during these long distance relationships. So we want to know, um, you know, are you expecting a good morning every day? Are you expecting a good night every day, right? We want to be communicating these things because if all of a sudden Adrian doesn't give me my good morning, what's happening here? We start to kind of get in our heads a little bit. <clears throat> so setting those ground rules, super important. The other thing that we could do, don't be afraid to be creative sexually when it comes to on the phone, over Zoom. I mean, I know we're in this, you know, internet world, we're not sure what's out there, but don't be afraid to be playful in this space, right? That intimacy is often the glue that kind of keeps us together. So don't lose that. Find ways to be creative in that space. Uh, really helpful. Uh, do things together. I know Christine and Adrian, you had shared this with me before. Play games online. Watch YouTube videos. Pick a documentary you can watch online together, right? Try to share space the best way you can uh, is, is really important. Set goals with each other. Eventually, the distance is going to close, right? The gap is going to close. We're going to be back with each other eventually, whether that's in a year, a month, whatever that looks like, we will connect. So setting goals is really important. So when you are connecting, we don't have to catch up. We're already here and we're just picking up where we left off, right? So super important there. And then again, honest, open communication share your fears, share your insecurities, share jealousy if that's coming up. As much as you can put out there to share with your partner, the better you're going to be able to manage and get through the distance without kind of staying in your head a little bit, right? Use your partner. We're here to help each other and support each other through the distance. Believe me, we're probably both feeling it, right? That's a lot of wonderful insight. I can barely scratch the surface with everything that you just said, but I can touch on some things. I like what you said about excessive communication. I'd never really thought about that before, um, but it made me think about my recent conversation with Adrian about codependency versus interdependency and how with codependency, it's kind of like what you said, people are on the phone with each other 24 seven and they don't really have much of a life outside of their relationship. We don't want that, but at the same time, we want to have some sort of presence with our partner, even in this long distance that we have with each other. You want them to know that you are there for them and you want to maintain some sort of communication with them. So it, it's just um, some balance that is a challenge to, to have, but I think it's very important and Absolutely. very good stuff. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and that's, that's the key word right there, Christine, is balance, right? Find that balance that works for you and your partner. You know, your partner may not be a big texter or, or that, right? So you need to know and understand how you can communicate with each other and, and find that balance. It's really important. My heart is just swelling with gratefulness because we are really learning a lot from you. And I'm sure that the guys who are watching right now all over the world, please do comment your questions and your feedback of the things that you guys are learning from Jackie right now. So um, Christine and I are really trying to be creative in how we are making this LDR work. And we're doing a weekly workout. The other night we just did uh zumba and then we're also doing a weekly meditation and we're doing a weekly virtual date and i have i'm going to share a documentary this saturday with you christine i, I hope that you would like it so brilliant that you're doing this because this is what we need to do and share what's working for us so other people can say you know what i'm going to try that right but Again, gestures, a brilliant way of doing things, whether it's a sign like this through the computer, through the screen, sending them a t-shirt you came across as you were shopping in a market, whatever's going on, this made me think of you. Little things like that can go a long, long way in our long distance relationship. So awesome job, guys. Jackie, can you share some tips for looking after your mental health while working or studying from home? And also... I have a friend who I just thought, um, as I read to you this question, someone who is looking for work right now. Oh, okay. Great question. So the one, you know, it's whether we're home studying, whether we're home working, 
um, or you know, unemployed at this at this point in time. In order to maintain our mental health, there's there's a couple. Well, there's a few things that we can do, and I'll 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 name them, and then I'll kind of go into a little bit of detail around it. So, first thing we want to do is start setting schedules, right? If we're if we're living, working, breathing all of those things at home, setting a schedule super 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 important. And I'll go into a little bit of detail around what we need to do there. Second one, stay connected. Hugely important for our mental health. We are creatures of connection. <laughs> we need connection. We survive when we have connection. We thrive when we have connection. So staying connection, staying, sorry, staying, staying connected, super important. And then the third thing we need to remember in order to maintain our mental health is our self-care routines. So we need to find time for that. So setting the schedule, right? Pretend as if you are going to work, right? Get up at a, at a regular time every day, right? Have your shower, get dressed, eat breakfast, create a routine for yourself. We are creatures of habit. Routines help us physically, mentally prepare for our day, right? So we want to maintain that. I know I am guilty. I wake up and be like, I got my first Zoom meeting in five minutes and away I go, right? But I do feel for the rest of the day, I'm kind of like, I'm sluggish. I can't really keep up with what I'm trying to do. So setting a routine, very, very important. If you commute to work, if you're used to commuting to work, you can still commute to work in your house, right? And this is really important. Again, create a designated space for you to go to work, for you to actually physically separate your workspace from your living space, et cetera. Another important piece there, your time schedule your time your time is precious often when we're at home we don't necessarily have boundaries around our work time and our schedule or our study time and the amount of energy we put into maybe even looking for a job but understand that our time is extremely valuable to us so set breaks for yourself incorporate your self-care practices right schedule water cooler talks with your with your co-workers if you have them Right, really, really important. And then if you set those limits around your work schedule, around when you can be, you know, when you're open to being contacted, share those limits out with your coworkers, with your friends. Let them know what you're working through, right? Hold those boundaries. It's very important. Just because people know we're accessible, because of course we're sitting in front of a computer or they know we're home on our phone, doesn't mean that we are ready to engage in that conversation. So know those limits and hold those limits. It's important for you just to have those. Second way, of course, we said stay connected, right? Virtual coffee breaks with your friends, get on Zoom, FaceTime, whatever that looks like, stay connected. Have those meetup chats and try not to talk shop, right? If it's about work, take the moments away from work and talk about what you've got going on, talk about your self-care routines, whatever's happening in your life, but try to stay away from that shop talk. So find time, designate time to stay connected. And then self-care, uh, I mean, that kind of goes without saying, right? Find that time for your self-care, make you a priority. We know that self-care can be a little bit of a privilege for some of us when it comes to finding time. We have a lot of things going on in our lives but it is essential for maintaining our mental health or our positive mental health. So try to get back to basics when it comes to self-care. If you can't find time for yoga or, or Zumba, things like that, but sufficient sleep, right? Healthy eating, exercising regularly, super basic stuff, but can make a significant impact on our mental health while we're kind of stuck at home in this one location, uh, working, studying, looking for work, whatever that looks like. So three big things there for us. Jackie, could you please tell us more about your movement for mental health? Uh, how did you come up with this idea? What's it doing in your community now? And how can we and all of the English blog listeners get involved and help you on this journey? Yeah, great question. Uh, great, loaded, loaded question. And uh, I don't know if I can do it complete justice, but uh, yeah, so movement for mental health, um, it was kind of a, came as kind of a passion project, really, for, for both my partner and I, and uh, 
Kelly being a, a dance professional and a choreographer uh, by trade, and then of course me being uh, in the mental health field. Um, but both of us share uh, a significant amount of life experience uh, with mental health and addiction. So um, Kel Kelly is in her 13th year of sobriety. I am in my sixth year of sobriety. And we, we met here in Fort McMurray and, you know, kind of fell in love with this idea of, of helping people. And so we, we'd both been to, to therapy and treatment and, and all very good, right? But all one, one, one dimensional, it was just talk therapy. And we both incorporated different elements within our treatment. And a lot of it came down to movement and, and using, different movement techniques to support our healing. So we basically combined both of our passions and used the principles of dance movement therapy. And we, we created a program. So we eliminated kind of some language in that, which we knew uh, people don't like to hear the word dance. If, if they hear dance, they automatically think I'm not a dancer, so I can't do this. And we also removed the word therapy because not everybody not everybody one needs therapy, but not everybody believes that they need therapy as well. And so that can be a little bit of a deterrent for folks uh, when it comes to accessing services. So we, we coined it movement for mental health. So of course we, we incorporate our, our body, mind, body connection and how we start to heal throughout our journey. So uh, yeah, we're, we're really, really excited about it. It's hard to kind of describe it in its, in its entirety you, you have to really go through the process uh, of the movement. But yeah, we everything is, there is still verbal processing in, in movement in, in movement for mental health, but a lot of it is just done through our body. We communicate every single day with our body and it holds a lot of information. It holds a lot of trauma, tension, all of those things. And it needs to be released, right? In order for us to heal, we need to release that and have and use our body as the natural conduit that we need it to be to have energy flow in and out. So we incorporate, you know, mental health practices, movement practices, and we combine them and we have this really great, beautiful program that now we're we're delivering in our community that uh, right now we're working with uh, teachers and caregivers. Uh, of course, we know our teachers right now um, are, are dealing with a significant amount of challenges. Certainly not anything I think as teachers we signed up for, uh, working through a pandemic and online and managing a lot of things. So right now we're, we're doing movement for mental health with our caregivers and teachers in the community. And we're also working with um, different and specific youth groups in our community that have been identified as um, you know, folks that need some additional support right now on their journey. So, so Kel and I, she works with kids all day long. She loves it. So she's kind of my, my youth guru there, uh, with the movement pieces. And then I come in, of course, with some verbal processing around how are we healing in our journey, um, and applying some cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, various things of that nature, uh, to our programming. So yeah, we're really excited to have this as another, um, complimentary service to all other health, uh, mental health supports that are in our community and, and really around the world. And we're, we're really fortunate now that we have an online platform because we've been able to deliver our movement for mental health to various groups. You know, if, if the English blog would love to have a movement for mental health session, we can do that for you because now we have, you know, we're just so fortunate to have these platforms where we can share around the world um, different practices that we're doing. So that's kind of the movement for mental health. It was combining two passions of two folks that have some lived experience that said, hey, there's people out there that need help and, and we want to be those helpers. It's, it's for us to do. We've been given the gift and we, we have to give that back now to folks. So I just want to say thank you so much to, to Jackie, uh, not only, and I want to say too, to our listeners, like really don't, don't be afraid to try something new. This is good advice. And, um, starting stuff like this can help you really realize how, 
how much better it makes you feel. And just like you would tell your students in the classroom, you know, you're always trying to, you know that you have to look at people holistically. And so you need to remember to look at yourself as well and to, to, to not ignore you know, your mental health or your self-care or just parts of your life that, that make you a holistic person. As Jackie said, it's easy to be consumed by work when work is your house, right. but you really, you really have to push it back and, and maintain the person that you are in all the different facets. I love that. And I, I appreciate that, um, you know, you, you, you allow this platform to kind of take over and move into healthy relationships. And I, I think that that's really important. Um, you know, even as teachers, we can exemplify uh, healthy relationships to our students um, who are, you know, coming through and, and, and are going to be our leaders of tomorrow. And that's really important that we're demonstrating them healthy communication, healthy relationships, uh, what that looks like, and also being a voice for what's a healthy relationship for you and, and understanding the importance of that. Um, and also, you know, no time better than now when we, we, you know, as you said, Sarah, you're, you're being forced back into lockdown. I don't, I think we're going to probably find ourselves in a lockdown here soon as well. Um, isolation can become very comfortable for a lot of people. Um, we can fall into it very quickly. The challenge then becomes getting out of it, uh, which is where then we get into these traps of, of isolation, loneliness, and, you know, we start to see depression creeping up and, and different things in folks. So now is the time, if you're finding yourself spending more time alone, not having conversations, not connecting with people, I strongly encourage you now is the time to, to make that effort to reach out, find somebody to start connecting with um, because who knows how long we're gonna be here, but we, do, we don't want isolation mental health to become the next pandemic that we're, we're dealing with here. Um, so if you find yourself starting to isolate or feeling comfortable in that isolation, I know I can be guilty of that, make that extra effort to reach out. Um, and if you as a friend are noticing that somebody is not reaching out as much as they used to, go that extra mile as the friend and check in on them. It's really important right now. I, I overheard that a teacher checked in with their student and was just asking how the student was doing mental health wise because normally teachers meet with students to talk about their academic progress and whatnot and then the student said i really appreciate that you actually reached out and asked how i am doing because that's a rarity among teachers these days and the teacher just expressed dismay at that that teachers are not really checking in with their students. I, I mean, yes, they're human beings and they're going through their own thing, but there is this layer of responsibility, I think, on part of the teacher to check in with their students and see how they are doing as people, not just as students and how they're doing academically. And it's a difficult thing to do, but it's, it's very important. You need to ask each other how we're doing. And it's not just your friends and family, but it's also the people you're working with, your coworkers, your students. And we are in this community and we are going through this together and we have to be there for each other. Absolutely, you bet. <laughs> and you know, Jackie, you just came at, at the perfect timing because in the Philippines, we are again on another set of lockdown. The curfew has shortened from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And there were so many um, communities that are really on hard lockdown. So. This episode is really fitting for and helpful for so many Filipinos, and I'm sure even in other parts of the world. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, big. It's there's challenges. I mean, they're, they're going to keep coming at us. Right, friends. Uh, this we're, we're in this for the long haul. It's challenging to, to stay positive, to maintain, uh, you know, that outlook that we, we will get through this. It's, it's hard to kind of see that finish line right now. But uh, keeping up with that positive attitude uh, can, can take us a long way and hopefully get us to that finish line uh, so we can all be connected again uh, without the physical distance that we, we have to maintain right now. 
And don't forget that the English blog team provides customized lesson plan making services, life and career coaching sessions, weekly blog and blog content related to ESL education. For more information, visit our website, www.theenglishblog.com. Beyond our main website, where you can find all of our blogs and articles, we also have our Facebook page, English Blog for Teachers, where we premiere our videos, as well as our YouTube channel, our LinkedIn, our Twitter, and our Instagram. So please like, follow, share, subscribe, talk to us. Um, let us know what you think about Jackie's tips. If you are interested in the movement for mental health, um, and if you have any questions for us or ideas for future topics, let us know. And I'd like to thank um, 90.5 Good Vibes FM also for helping us spread the spread the spread the message, spread the word um, on the radio in Mindanao. So check us out um, at 90.5 Good Vibes FM on online digital radio. And if you just happen to be in Mindanao. Um, and you can find all of that on our Facebook page and also on our homepage, www.theenglishblog.com. And for the last time, my name is Adrian from Makati City, Philippines. I'm Christine from Daytona Beach, Florida. And I'm Sarah in Italy. And I'm Jackie in Alberta, Canada. <laughs> Reminding you guys to stay healthy and happy and keep learning. Bye for now and until next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.